Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in. And in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a closer look at a fragrance by the company Project Alternative. And this one is called Barong of Bali. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the review, I do want to disclose that this product was sent to me for review. So for that reason, I will attempt to review this fragrance using mostly objective terms rather than subjective ones. Also, if you are new to this channel, I would love it if you could subscribe to this channel to support it. But please wait until the end of the video so that I can provide value first. So this is a company called Project Alternative. And just like the name implies, they do put out alternative fragrances. And so they smell like more popular niche or designer fragrances. This one in particular, however, I'm not entirely sure what this is an alternative of, but I'm sure a lot of people have insight, and so you're going to leave comments down below, and you're going to let me know. This one is called Barong of Bali, and so this is Bali, Indonesia, and Barong, of course, the uh, fragrance itself was made in the United Arab Emirates, and this is an Indian group on Facebook uh, called Project Perfumery India, and so you may find a lot of really helpful discussions on their perfumes on that Facebook group. I'm going to go ahead and link it down below, but Barong is the panther-like mythical and fictional creature of the Indonesians or the Indonesian people. And so you might notice that there is that panther-like creature engraved here in the front. There is a plaque on the bottle and that's more or less where it comes from. Now this is an oud-based offering and from the information that I've scouted or uh, you know sourced online, uh, they do utilize a natural oud note in here. To what percentage, I'm not entirely sure, but this is intended to be a fresh take on oud on account of the note of of bergamot. I'm really excited to tell you what I think of this one. Let's start things off with the presentation. So the presentation for this one is rather nice, just as alternative oud and barong bali here on the front. It opens up just like this, and you will see this laser cut silhouette on the inside in which the bottle rests. The bottom of the box has the name of the company written on it, and the back of the box has the ingredients, the size, and the UPC. And the bottle has a really intricate design on the plaque here. It says Barong of Bali, and you also see the Barong panther-like mythological creature here on the front. It has a wooden cap as well. On the very bottom, you will see the ingredients, the concentration, made in UAE, and then the batch code is printed on there as well. The cap for this one does not click into place at all. Please do not pick this one up from the cap. And the distribution on the atomizer is very wide. Let's continue with the smell. As soon as this fragrance opens up, you will notice that it is inevitably an oud-based offering. If you are a fan of a lot of oud rose fragrances on the market, you will see that this one is among them. However, in my opinion, there's a nice balance of the two. I'm not entirely sure if there's rose in here, but I do get something similar to rose. It could be geranium, it could be the use of some other ingredient, perhaps even pink pepper, but I do pick up on like a rosy nuance in this one as well. In terms of the oud used in here, I know oud has a few different facets. And so it can come across smelling rather woodsy. There are also some varieties of oud that can smell a little sweet, believe it or not. Some that smell very animalic. And so this one I don't think is very animalic. And I think it's the combination of this non-aggressive oud with the inclusion of the freshness of the bergamot in the opening that makes this an oud for those who are not necessarily lovers of oud. I think being as though there are some oud fragrances on the market that could be a little bit too challenging, a little bit too animalic and too aggressive, perhaps because of the raw material itself or the concentration in which it's used, this is one that will open people's minds to the idea of oud. Now, I must say that this is a very diffusive blend. And the few times that I've worn it, and it's only been a few in full disclosure, um, it's really radiated off my skin and off of my clothing because yes, I have actually sprayed my clothing with this one too. And I find that um, I think the citrus is responsible for that. But Despite the fact that it's diffusive, it also remains rather linear. I feel like the citrus that's in here is well established into the mid of the fragrance, but not necessarily into the base. So while you might smell it for the first hour and a half, it doesn't necessarily survive past that hour and a half mark. And so this one is a really unusual fresh oud fragrance that I think people would find as a likable oud fragrance, but I also think that there's going to be that subset of people that are diehard fans of the note of oud, and they want something that's a little bit more aggressive, something that's a little bit more animalic, and something that is, um, 
a little bit more challenging, if I, if I may use that adjective there. But if you are a fan of something that's really well rounded out, in my opinion, of course, and something that has a little bit of a balance of every ingredient without necessarily tipping the scale, so to speak, in the direction or in the favor of the oud, I think this is one to check out. So the best way that I can describe it, it opens up very fresh and it has this sort of um, deceptive freshness because it's not an aquatic, it's not a citrus dominant scent, but you can tell that the presence of the bergamot and perhaps some other citrus ingredients really just make it an appealing and inviting blend. As it starts to transition, of course, you will get a little bit of that oud rose combination without it being an overly domineering oud scent, all the while containing real agarwood. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. First up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I think this is a unique scent. When I think of other Oud Rose fragrances that I've smelled on the market, of course, Montal is a house that comes to mind almost immediately. With a lot of Montal offerings, however, I feel like the rose might be a little bit too strong or the oud might be a little bit too animalic and too challenging. I'm thinking of like the black ouds, the Nepal oud, oud queer darabi, which is definitely on the animalic side on account of either civet or castorium. And this one is not challenging to that effect. And so while it might have a little bit of the DNA of other uh, fragrances that you may have encountered that feature those notes, this one it's still in a category of its own. And so it's one that you really just have to smell to get a better idea of what I mean. In terms of the longevity on this one, it was really good. I got about seven hours. Projection on this one was great for the first two hours, and I feel like the bergamot really gives it a push in this one. And so had it not been for the inclusion of the citrus, I don't think that the projection would have been as loud. Yes, the sustenance would have still been there. The longevity would have still been there, but I think it's really the citrus elements that allow this one to project off your skin rather nicely. In terms of the versatility, I can see this one being a versatile oud because of the likability of the oud. And so I can see this one being worn dressed up, dressed down all seasons round. I don't think it would necessarily choke somebody out in the summertime, but I think you have better options out there in the summertime. So wear this one when the weather gets a little bit cold, perhaps not even in the dead of winter. In the dead of winter, you might want something a little bit more challenging, a little bit more daring, but I can see this one working all year round. And I think that this is a fragrance for anybody to wear. It could be a masculine or a feminine scent. It's perfectly unisex in my opinion. And I can also see this one worn dressed up as opposed to casually, uh, just because for a casual fragrance, you want to wear a citrus dominant or an aquatic or like a freshie or something like that. And this is not that. And last up in terms of the presentation, I kind of like the presentation, the wooden cap, the plaque on the front, the attention to detail. My final verdict on this one is it's a really nice scent if you're a fan of oud fragrances, but you don't like the overly challenging or aggressive oud fragrances, but you still enjoy the smell of rose and you enjoy the freshness of citrus. Give this one a shot. Barong of Bali by Project Alternative might be a fragrance worthwhile of your trying. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was my review of Barong of Bali. If you own or have tried this fragrance, I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Also, if you did take something of value from this video and you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing to this channel to support what I do. All you have to do is click the red button in the corner and also make sure to click the notifications bell so this way whenever I do upload future fragrance-related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye.